Coming to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. You'll meet our guest in a minute, the man behind the Billie Eilish Grays. Really amazing. But first, the Sweetwater Gear Fest Getaway Sweepstakes is in full swing. You have one more week to enter. Then you become eligible for an all-expense paid trip for yourself and a companion to the annual Gear Fest on the amazing Sweetwater campus, June 21st and 22nd. Don't want to miss that. Free travel, free hotel, a gift card for a couple hundred bucks so you can grub and have a good time. Plus, you'll attend our live appearance and hang out backstage with Dave and I, and we'll get a chance to meet you. We look forward to that. Major artists, producers, engineers, panels, workshops, and all the gear you can handle. And you get to hang out and enjoy and meet all the folks doing those various and sundry things. Hurry up. Don't delay. Enter right here, right below me. Submit your info. And we will be announcing the winner on May 3rd. So you don't want to delay. Get your stuff in there. A couple weeks ago, we had the incredible Churko family on, Kevin, Kane, and Chloe. And lots of stuff goes on backstage and before we come on air. And one of the things that happened during that time is everybody had on an Apple Watch but me. And lo and behold, oh, I go to my thing too. and this incredibly classy rock family that's building an empire had sent me an Apple Watch. So I don't have it programmed yet, but I do have it on. <laughs> uh, it took me about an hour to figure out the bands. So to Kevin, Kane, and Chloe, just want to thank you so much. You guys are an absolute class act. And there's a reason why you're successful. So big thanks. Um, and also for all the rest of you, we want to keep you up to speed. So if you would sign up for our newsletter, like, subscribe, and click notify, we would appreciate that. And we thank you for that. Uh, Rob Kanelsky has impeccable credits. 30 Seconds to Mars, Alicia Cara, Ed Sheeran, Joey Badass, J. Cole, Nas, and a whole bunch of others. Nonetheless... Billy Eilish, he's been there for the beginning and is riding a phenomena. Please welcome Rob Kanilski. Hey, dude. What's going on, man? Good, oh, man. Right. So right. glad What's to... up, buddy? We have to give a shout out to our friend Buffy, who hooked us up, right? Yes. Yeah. So one of the things about your career, both in talking to you on the phone, we had a really good chat, and also reading about you, is that you have not feared taking the steps when the window opens. Like, whether it's from your studio to then you made the move and said, well, I'm going to go to Sony Music and Sony Studios, do that. Then at some point in time, you just gathered up your stuff and headed to L.A. And has, is it an instinctive thing? Has it just been ambition? It's usually I'm, I'm on the brink of failure. Mm -hmm. And I go, so it's fear. I'm either going to quit everything or I'll try this. Mm -hmm. uh, every time that I've wanted to quit something awesome has happened, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but that's because you took advantage of whatever was in front of you. Yeah, I mean, I came out here, <clears throat> I, I, I was sitting there kind of just wondering what am I doing with myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, New York at the time was kind of a free-for-all. Like all the big studios had closed mm -hmm. and nobody really knew what to do. There were some small places opening. I was working with a bunch of songwriters and I was just trying to like kind of find some solid ground mm -hmm. and then I had spoken to a friend who had, who had moved out here from New York mm -hmm. and I talked to him on the phone one day and he's like hey man LA is pretty good it's pretty good out here so, so I said okay and I, I uh, thought about it for a minute and then I I packed up two suitcases and drove here off you went yeah, yeah. I got here on a Monday and then Tuesday I got a gig wow yeah was that with is, no ID it was with so it was with uh Oh, Rock Nation. So oh, okay. shout out to Fab. Yep. She's watching. So Fab, I don't know look. Girl. Fab, I met her in New York and we hit it off. And then uh, I told her I was that I was going to go to L.A. And she said, oh, well, we do stuff in L.A. So when you get out there, hit me up. So as I was driving cross country, I was, I was in Arkansas. I remember this and I called her and she sounded busy. So she said, I, I'll call you. I, I got to call you right back. And I never heard from her. Mm. So, you know, I started getting a little worried. You know, I'm driving out here. I get to L.A. and I'm like, I never heard from Fab. Maybe she was just like 
maybe she wasn't maybe she was just kind of like yes yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and uh and it was a monday i remember the monday and then i got i guess on tuesday i'll have to start calling some people because i don't know what i'm doing here i have limited funds to stay mm-hmm. here on this mm-hmm. couch and uh she called me on tuesday and she's like yeah i lost your number i, I was trying to find it i'll be done and uh she's like what's your schedule like I was like, it's pretty wide open, <laughs> you know. And then uh, it was a it was a writing song camp <clears throat> with Rita Ora. Uh-huh. They, wow. they were working with her, and, and they had booked this house in Los Feliz, and there was a studio in there, uh, like it was called Lava Flow. I don't know if it's still there. And they flew everybody in from like London and all these people all over the U.S. and they were creating for her. And uh, and I did it was th- like thirty days straight. <clears throat> and then I had my best friend's wedding in New Jersey to go back to. So I remember I got hopped on a plane, I flew home to the wedding, and I remember sitting there at the wedding going, oh, my, my run in L.A. is over. <laughs> and uh, I, I was on the plane, <clears throat> and I got an email from Fab saying, you know, I got a session with uh, J. Cole and No ID. It's for two weeks. And then um, that lasted four, four years. years. Yeah, right. with, so I, I, I linked up with Dion, No ID. Yeah. And... Uh, and then, yeah, he was building a team at the time, and it was like perfect place, right time, and mm-hmm. and then, yeah. How did your engineering chops grow during that time? So, in between, so, so I worked at Sony Studios uh, early in my career, and then they closed. I had just finished working on uh, some big records, and I was kind of riding high, thinking that things are going to be good. I, I went down and I, I bought a, a used BMW. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm rolling. I've made it. I'm yeah. here. And then <laughs> we got the company wide email to come meet at a hotel. Mm. We walked in and they told us that they're shutting down. Mm. So I still thought I could be freelance. Like I'll be fine. I got these great credits and I didn't do anything for six months. I mm. couldn't get anything. And then uh, I linked up with some songwriters and then I started working with them. And as I was working with them, that's when I really, like develop my chops, I think, because mm-hmm. we, were, we were recording and mixing like three, four songs a day, mm-hmm. and it had to be deliverable, like you know, right from the, you know, they're pitching a song, so mm-hmm. they wanted to be an end sounding product. So I did that for two years, and then and then did that, that make you more efficient with speed? What yeah, you picked up yeah, or, I yeah. felt really confident at that point. And mm-hmm. then when I came out here, when like I think we were talking about this earlier, mm-hmm. when the situation presents itself, you're more than ready, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and. uh so right off the bat, it was just like I hit the ground running out of here. Mm-hmm. So in your as you were coming up in your New York days, was it genre specific or were you working all over the map in terms of? <clears throat> so I, I started out. I wanted. I was in a rock band. So like I was like my my plan was when I quit the rock band, I was like I'm gonna I want to produce rock records. Mm-hmm. That was like my goal, and I did that for a little while. I, went, I had my own studio in the Jersey Shore. And uh, was working with bands and stuff. But then I hit a place where I wanted to work on bigger records. So I really just tried to get a job at any of the studios in New York. I had a friend who was at Sony. Mm -hmm. So he got me like an interview. And then they liked me. And they said, you're cool, but we don't have any jobs. So I called them every day. Or no, I called them once a week for like six or seven months Mm -hmm. to see if they had a job. Because they said, keep in touch. So I just called them every week. Mm -hmm. And finally, the one day they called me. And I went in, I started there. But working the overnight shift as a runner and just doing the whole grind, I wound up getting eventually promoted to assistant and I, I got put on uh, the Beyonce uh, B-Day album, the second mm, album. Mm. And that just opened up all these doors for me. So it's like all of a sudden I went from like an aspiring rock guy to like now I'm here in like the R&B world, like, mm-hmm. you know, or R&B and other urban stuff. So. It just opened all these doors, and I've I've just kind of always followed like an open door. You know, I don't mm-hmm. I, I didn't really have an end, end game. I think that originally I wanted to be a, you know rock rock producer, but I don't I didn't know how to get there. I just knew that this looks like the right direction. Mm-hmm. And then you you get to work with these like amazing people, mm-hmm. you know. And then I just kind of rode the wave. It kind of drives itself at some point. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you're. Uh as this wave kept going, there's all these big names and you garner from that, you know, J. Cole, Big Sean, Nas, and so on and so forth. And then your career, once you came out here and you stepped away from the no ID thing, now is Rob and whatever's happening, correct? Right. And yeah. here's this Billie Eilish thing that is sort of a happy accident. And boom, now you're 
this phenomena. How's it affected you? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm like, once again, you know, the next chapter when I went on my own, I was like, either quit or try this, you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, and it was a lot of hard work and <clears throat> a lot of different projects saying yes to like anything at the beginning and, and just really just seeing where I could go with this. And, sure. uh, you know, and then I stumbled through just the series of interesting meetings. I wound up, uh, mixing a record that the mass uh, that the mastering engineer was friends with uh billy and her team mm. and he introduced them to me if that makes sense and uh <clears throat> i did one song for them while i was in the middle of mixing the joey badass album mm -hmm. and I, at first i didn't think i had time to do it but i said you know what I, i'll do it on sunday that was my one day off was this so. the distorted 808 song yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that song calls a bellyache mm -hmm. so i heard it and i was like this is really good so I'll do it on Sunday. I think I think it was one of the day, off days, and I did it. <clears throat> and um, I was telling you guys earlier that I, I sent. I never did this before, but I sent two different versions. I one where I distorted the 808 a little bit, and one where I kept it more in line with how they had it. And uh, they, I think they, I think they chose the distorted one. Mm. And then we, then we, we've been working together since. Mm. The um, um, what do you think from a mix standpoint? your job was to bring to the record because at this point in time if you've been working with her trust has been established her and her brother right and they produce their own records have this incredible maturity because one's 21 one's 17 yeah. is that correct billy's 17 and, yeah. and the brother and they have this kind of crazy way of being sophisticated in their music but relatable mm -hmm. in a way and kind of every man it's 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 really fascinating i, I sort of get what the phenomenon is. So when that's entrusted to you, what did you felt like you needed to do technically to the music to make sure that that came through? Don't get in the way of it. Mm. That's kind of like how the, like, I, it was a slow build, right? I, I always thought she was ama like amazing. And I was blown away by their age. Mm. And, uh, and, and as we like kind of all learned our own styles together, you know, in a way, like we kind of developed I think there's like a really good, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Camaraderie. Yeah, trust, it was just it was just like chemistry. yeah, trust. It was just like a good flow, and uh, you know when, when the album. So I, I just I had my daughter right when I started basically mixing the album. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mixed one song beforehand, and uh, and then I remember I w went to go. We had the well, Jamie had the baby. Mm. I was just there, uh, <laughs> and we shout out to Jamie. Shout out to Jamie and Ruby. There's Ruby. She's amazing. Uh, and and I, I think I didn't have time to think about it because mm. I was like a new father. I was going crazy. I like it was just chaos in the mm. house, and I work out of my house, so it was just like just mix it, you know. And uh, I I knew I was always excited to work with her. Stuff. Do you think that helped? Yeah, I think it did. I think it, it, it took me out of the way of overthinking it. Mm -hmm. I, I was driving over here and I was like, well, if I, they asked me to mix another album, I, I, I really hope I don't overthink that one because you've got the pressure now. Well, you but, need to time the pregnancy <laughs> for the second child. There you go. With the mixing. There you go. It feels to me like a um, big fan of your work, by the way. Thank you. Uh, got a million questions for you, either on air or off air. Um, it feels to me like the Billie Eilish project was was a project that you finally could use all your previous influences on. And that's what made that project work because there's a little rock in there sometimes. There's a little R&B, a little hip hop, a little this, a little that. And and all of that stuff in New York and all of the Bruce Springsteen, all that stuff ended up in, in these records. And um, great, great job. Thank you. Um, on, 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 on Lovely, um, how'd you get the vocal sound on that? The vocal sound is incredible simplicity with her uh <clears throat> i should have pulled that session up before i came i, I was looking at other stuff i was yeah. i wasn't anticipating question on lovely that's, uh, that's the record that caught my attention so so you know i always put that the um the fairchild plug-in the 670 the that yeah and um a little bit of dsing and um the knee the uad neve 1073 and the Fab Filter Pro Q EQ, 
<clears throat> and I do a lot of subtractive. If I'm doing EQ with her, it's mostly subtractive because you take out a lot of 2.5, 2. 2.5, 3, uh, then some of the low mids just, just to kind of, cause they, they send me a really full sounding vocal. Like they are, they, they give me amazing materials to work mm. with. I, I'm not, <clears throat> there's, there's, there's zero struggle when I work with on their stuff, you know, it's mm -hmm. really amazing. I, I even opened up some of the stuff and I was like, wow, this is so like, just so conservative in a way with the, some of the EQing cause it just came to me so good, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but the lovely, I remember, I think I have the vocals when it goes into the chorus, I panned her off to the left and Khalid off to the right a touch. Okay. Um, but a lot of automation just rides on her vocals and his vocals and, I can't remember if if the reverb was given to me or if I added it. I, I don't I don't remember off the top mm -hmm. of my head. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, Phineas, mm -hmm. shout out to Phineas. He's like, he's gonna be, he's brilliant. Uh, he they had they had their their records are so thought out mm -hmm. at every level already. You know, everything is intentional. Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things like. <clears throat> like I said earlier, just don't get in the way of it. This is mm -hmm. this is happening. But that's a good way you put it because everything is intentional. That's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. But it still somehow feels organic. Yeah. Like not contrived, but a very specific point to get from point A to point B, which I think means in your job, you have to know what you want to do to get out of the way. Right. Right. Like it's it's, it's not a feel thing. It's a it's a thoughtful. Yeah. Process is it? Would you agree? I would totally agree. Yeah. I actually sit there and I, 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 a lot of the mixing process with her is listening, just me listening. Like mm -hmm. I, 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 there are times it comes together. You know, some days it takes a full day of really going in, and, and then there are some days where it, it happens so quick that I sit there and I go, let me make sure that it's like it feels done, but let me just make sure. Mm -hmm. So I'll listen to it for a couple of hours, mm -hmm. just going, just making sure, because sometimes it's like that was. Wow, that just happened, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if this ever happened to you. Just like Really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm in I'm in doubt of my skills the whole time, but yeah. Me too. <laughs> no, me too, that too. <laughs> I love the way you place harmonies in, in 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 the Billy stuff. Like the harmonies are as loud as the lead vocal. Like I would put them a little lower, but I from now on, in case anybody's watching, uh, I'm gonna put the harmonies as loud as the lead vocal. I love it. It gives like it gives it gives you a feeling of her personality, which is hard to do for a girl that young, for us engineers. And, yeah. and uh, was that a conscious effort? Yeah, that that was. I, I mean, like I said, it, it's so thought out of. <clears throat> it's so ready, right, from Phineas and mm -hmm. Billy. Like they they know they they know what they want. Mm -hmm. So it comes to me like that, <clears throat> and. I do. A, I treat it a little bit. I use the Oxford inflator okay. on all her backgrounds. Okay, that's like something that I've been doing. Uh, just, to, just different. It, it does something strange. I don't even know. Yeah, what, I don't either. What it actually? There's the effect knob. Yeah, and I was I'm about not, to say that. And yeah. I'm not really like the. I'm not like the, a techie guy. That's not uh -huh. like the kind of engineer I am. Uh -huh. I, so I just I turn it up and then I go, oh yeah, this is cool. Uh -huh. And then I, sometimes I'm like, I have no idea what it's really doing. But that was one of the things I, I thought of. Uh, with that and then sometimes there's some imaging stuff but you do that really well too thank you thanks what do you use um s1 a little old school huh yeah and then i i, I use your preset on uh oh my god the p22 there's a spatial is it the spatializer that you did or is it mono uh, divide i did all I of them at one point in <laughs> yeah. time those are like those those are probably 20 years old those vintage, presets vintage presets i'm all <laughs> yeah. about them yeah. yeah. No, I, so it's real subtle stuff, you know. I, I, uh, <clears throat> I think it, there's a lot of nuance that I just try to, if I want to add to yeah. it or not take away yeah. from, you yeah. know. In, in in the work that you do, and there's such a broad range of things you worked on, you know, Troy Silliman, uh, Joey Badass. There's tons and tons and tons of things. Are they coming for a Rob Kanilski signature? Do you think? Do you think you have a signature, or is it? Or is it the fact that you sort of individualize each mix based on where it needs to go? You know, I don't really know. <clears throat> I think uh, I think I think I think a lot of the work I get is is majority is relationships of just interaction. I think that people 
I don't know if I have a sonic identity that I can really pinpoint. Mm. I, mean, I know I like loud drums, and I know I have vocals up front, and I, I know I, I, I do have a, a style, I guess. I don't really know how to pinpoint it. I do know mm -hmm. what, what I do, but I think they come to me for... That's the word. I mean, uh, I don't want to say personality because that's that sounds. But there's a, a trust. Uh, there's a relationship component. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's in it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's, it. a, it's a whole package that they come for. All of those things, you know. I, I try to think I'm easy to work with, and I and I and I, I try to think that I can meet their deadlines. And I I, I like to, I, my my goal is I look at it, you know, that I went in the service industry, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so whatever they. I try to help them get to where they want to go. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they need me to help them get 10 more percent. Sometimes they need me to go help them get a lot further. It, it really mm -hmm. depends. And I, I just, I try to see what their expectations are for me and what they want. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like going in for a haircut. Like, how much do you want taken off? You know, mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's kind of how I look at it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I answered your question, though. No, you did. <laughs> so um, describe your, your setup. Are you, you're in the box, of course. Um, do you use any outboard gear? Do you use some? Yeah, I, analog summing. So I have <clears throat> Pro Tools HD native setup, mm -hmm. the ultimate, mm -hmm. um, and I have the Dangerous 2 bus okay. summing into a uh, Dangerous compressor. Okay. And then I just added the converter. Or to which the one? The Dangerous converter. Oh, okay. Yeah. You like it? Love it. Yeah, I mm -hmm. do. I do. Um, but yeah, so it's mostly you know in the box, but then with the analog. And when, when you change. start a song, where do you start? Do you start with the drums or the vocal or? Um, I'd say most of the time I start with the drums, okay. but we were talking earlier. Like yeah. if, if the vocal speak, it, sometimes the vocal is just right there. I like I want to start with that. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Or if something jumps out at me, I, I'll, I'll maybe work on that first, mm -hmm. um, and then I just try to get it to dance, you know, mm -hmm. and then I and then I'll dial in my mix bus mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. And then I just mix into it. Do you start with any compression or anything on yes. the mix bus? Yes. I I have everything. I, I, I do that all first. That's kind of my, my approach. Okay. Um, I'll, I might fine tune a little at the end, but mm -hmm. I like mixing into limiters. I like mixing into compressors. I like mixing into the final chain. Mm -hmm. when, when, you're, when you're working on different genres, does that come... Effortlessly, or do you are you aware of the transition in the style of what you're given? Do you do you approach everything the same, or do you have one way for rock, one way for live drums, one way for 808s, one way for? Um, how, what's your process to to be able to maneuver in multiple genres and worlds so quickly? References. I, um, I like to. I'll start my day off with if I'm mixing, you know, something rock. I might just start listening to a bunch of rock in the morning. Okay. Just, I'll, I'll, I do a lot of reference listening just to get me out of the bubble of my head, you know, because, you know, I, so <clears throat> if we're doing some R&B stuff, I might go back and listen to some older R&B or something maybe that mm -hmm. makes me feel the same mm -hmm. as that, mm -hmm. and just to maybe like almost like a cleansing the palate mm -hmm. to get me into that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I, like, then I try to just do it. And then sometimes I'll import one of those songs into the mix and I'll A-B, you know, just yeah. until I get to a place where I feel like they can be on the same radio station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll abandon it. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I do that too. But it's hard if you're, because if you're doing multiple genres, I need to do that because I'll, next thing you know, if I'm working on all, a lot of hip hop and then all of a sudden I mix a rock record, yeah. they call me, they're like, dude, the drums are so right. loud. What are, what are you, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't, yeah. yeah. You know what? I was sitting here thinking, um, the, um, you mentioned earlier that, that Billie Eilish, um, got her start on SoundCloud at 15. Ex explain that, because the, the, the simplicity of that so, yeah. is frightening. I, and, for, and, and this so is her not, start. This is from, from, from what I've gathered from the uh -huh. internet and stuff, so I don't, I don't want to uh, be speaking on exactly how it went down, but from yeah. what I've heard, it's, what, what she did was that her and her brother put out a song on SoundCloud on their own, and it went viral overnight, or like almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And then I think that's what got them. Do you remember which song it Ocean was? Ocean Eyes was the song that they did. I think uh, from the story was that Phineas had written the song and wa wanted Billy to sing it. I, don't, I shouldn't tell the story because I don't know it perfectly. Okay. So I, I but, but it can still be done, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like if if if, uh, if people co stop coming to your restaurant, maybe you need to change the menu because 
she had the right menu at the right time. Yeah. yeah. That's it, incredible. Because I was thinking SoundCloud was kind of... I had no... <clears throat> I had really no... Uh, I don't go on SoundCloud, really, for me, mm -hmm. personally. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't... But I know... I think the younger generation is, like, living on there. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think it's one of those things that it was going to happen. Like, mm -hmm. SoundCloud was just the way... She's special, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When when you work with her, does she, does she have a lot of input? Uh, I like we, I, we don't we don't have a ton of back and forth on mm -hmm. like the, the mixes towards like I mean I, I talk mostly with Finn mm -hmm. and then I'll occasionally uh, talk to her too and then mm -hmm. and then but since we like I said since we've been working together the, the comments are really simple you mm -hmm. know a lot of just like hey turn this up a little bit turn this down a little bit. I'm hearing this little noise here, like just little subtleties. Do you make do you make the choice or do they make the choice on who masters the records? Um, so John Greenham masters all their stuff. Okay. And, and he's actually the one that hooked me up with them. Uh, so yeah, so, and uh, he does an awesome job. He's, mm. he's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show my ignorance, but did you work on the Tame Impala one too? No. Oh, okay. That's, that's a pretty good sounding record too. Yeah. This. Some of um, some of the audience is weighing in, asking questions. So there's a Twitter. One of the folks from Twitter said, "Any tips on how you get vocals and vocal presence and the kind of closeness on Billy's record? Was there anything specific?" Um, I, try, I so I have the chain with the, I use that the Fairchild, and it's really subtle, and it's I think the, it's just really. There's really no trick to it, I think. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's like I don't have a lot of processing on it. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a couple of small things happening. But I do go a lot of attention to detail on anything that's not pleasant. So if there's anything that comes from the recording that hurts my ears, I go in there and I clip gain it down. Mm -hmm. and I try to just kind of smooth it out. And I try to just basically get it to a place where I can bump it and it, there's nothing bothering It doesn't bother you. And, mm -hmm. uh, so as opposed to EQing it out, you clip gain it out? Mostly, yeah. But like I'll EQ... In a broad, I'll do a broad sweep of EQ if okay. it's something of the vocal in mm -hmm. general. But then the little stuff, like you know, if there's an S or a sh or a some yeah. plosive or something, yeah. I, I go in and I just deal with it on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, and it then feels to me like you're using multiple compressors, though. No, I uh, maybe two. Oh, well, that's multiple. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> I, for some reason, I have multiple feels like three to me. Okay. Uh, and then I'm and then also I'm using a. Uh, I love the you know, plugin. I love. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to get an endorsement or nothing, but the Waves Vocal Rider plugin, I use that a lot. Oh, yeah. Like really, but very, very mildly. Uh -huh. And then and then I do a lot of automation on our vocals to get it. Yeah. Hmm. Automation is the key, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it strikes me that you, um, while not a techie guy, but you're comfortable with the tools that you have. Right. And then you utilize them to make sure that you organically can mm -hmm. stay sort of rob and if i hear things or if things bother me or whatever i'll use the tools i can count on to do but i won't let them drive the process yeah i mean all the new plugins i have on my computer are from people sending me sessions that have new plugins I I and i just buy them so i can get to where they left it off you know I, i'm so good with what i have like and I, don't, and I don't need a lot the mm -hmm. way i do it mm -hmm. um th so it's, it's a bonus because then i get some cool stuff because you know mm -hmm. i would have never got this one plug in if someone else didn't send me it, you know, mm -hmm. and then I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, now I use that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I guess I guess when I get into forums and stuff and then you get some other, if a bunch of engineers are hanging out sometimes, it gets real technical and that just, so that just stresses me out because mm -hmm. then I immediately feel less than all of them mm -hmm. and I'm a fraud because I don't know, you know. And, and they all want to be you. Nah, that, that's no, I part. mean, maybe mm -hmm. not. Nah. Ron, Ron Fair said one time to me, he said, Dave, I've never signed a kick drum to a record deal. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever taken, taken a record back because it, it didn't have this plug-in or that plug-in on it. Right. It's not the tools, it's the house you build with them. Right. Has the blow-up of the Billy thing affected your career? Has, is the phone ringing? The is phone it, is ringing. Yeah, is that right? <laughs> it's good. It's good. I, yeah. I'm so fortunate, you know, like mm -hmm. I didn't see that. I, I knew it was... Well, you did the work. Yeah, I did, and, and it's great, you know, like yeah. I have a young family where, you know, where mm -hmm. it's, it's awesome, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and they're and working with them, they're, the whole team is like, 
the best. And, so. and, and also, I think, to be fair, beyond the Billy stuff, you have a significant amount yeah. of credits yeah. on a wide range of, of, of big names. Like, it's, it, this is not the only thing that, that's been hot for you. I've been, I've been, I've been working hard for a long time, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and I'm, and like just lucky to be in in the circles I've been in, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, like you know, from Sony to here, like there's just been. But you know amazing. what? I mean, there's a truism: if you, it's one thing to get into circles, another thing to stay. And you usually stay because there's contributions that make sense, you know. And if you weren't weren't doing that, but I think the lesson to the audience is is keep your eyes open for opportunity, be ready when you take the opportunity, yeah. know that you don't fumble the ball. Like this is all a process of, you know, you're as humble and and as you know thankful given all that's gone on all this time now, as opposed to saying, well, I made it, let me chill out, and so on and so forth. No, yeah, I, I want to, I, I want to, one thing that I would say to, if there's an aspiring engineer mm -hmm. wondering how, I, I would say just be, do the best job at what your, your job is. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was really good at ordering food. <laughs> you know, like as an assistant, like I got never, my food orders were always on point. Just you know, I knew what they liked. I, yeah. And then I'd also recommend the restaurants to remind them like, mm -hmm. oh, you really love that salmon from that place. They're like, you're right. We should get that. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's huge. You know, it's the, those little things I think that, that like, if you're, when I was in audio school or whoever it is, and they think that like, oh, if, I, if I really learn this compressor, like I'm going to be good. Like, mm -hmm. no, there's, mm -hmm. there's such an element to it that I feel like isn't really. So it's like when you're an assistant, be the best assistant. When you're a runner, be the best runner. Mm -hmm. When you're Absolutely. the vocal engineer, mm -hmm. get the vocal sound the best you can. When you're the mixer, do the best mix, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And I've learned that by, oh, by also stepping past the line too. And then you, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. There's a real well-known engineer in town that if a, if a, if a runner brings him a, uh, a bad order, like say he didn't want pickles on his burger, he'd have the kid fired immediately. Mm -hmm. And his logic was, if I can't trust you with a pickle, I can't trust you with millions and millions of dollars yeah. of people's income. And uh, while that's not true, it, there's a little bit of truth in that, you know? If you can show, if you can show you're good at small things, you should be good at large things. Are you good at batter's box? No, I'm really not. <laughs> Are you prepared for batter's box? <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, okay, good. You know so, I am. <laughs> so, are you? Do you like sports? Yeah. What are your What are your, What are your favorite sports? Well, um, New York Mets baseball. Oh, okay, cool. New York Giants football. Okay, cool. Well, this and is. Then, uh, my other teams are so bad. I don't want to get into it. This is a This is a baseball analogy, but yeah. I expect you to be good. I be that good Jersey <laughs> kind of attitude toward it. All right, DP, tee it up, please. Okay, base. Funky. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be tough for him already. 808s. Tame. Ooh. Vocals. Arvox. Horns. Not used enough. <laughs> <laughs> Reverb. More please. Mm. Am I playing right? Yeah, yeah, you're doing <laughs> great. You're doing great. You're winning. Virtual synthesizers. Print them. Loops. <laughs> Culture vulture. Mm. He's good, her. Piano. Piano. SSL channel strip. Strings. Uh, turn them up. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, least expensive piece of gear you've used on a high profile song? On a high profile song. Um, Plugin Valhalla Reverb. Give me, give me, yeah, that, that works. I was gonna say I, it wasn't a one-on song, but that Pig Nose amp. You ever, yeah, I used to have one. I used to use that all the time, but those records never made it past you know uh, a small regional. I'll count area. that, but I, I'll give you a win yeah. for bringing up a Pig Nose. That's that's some, <laughs> that's some obscure stuff. The best. Did you wear yours around your belt? Yeah. <laughs> play your little bass while you're walking exactly. around. Okay. Exactly. I give up. I give up. <laughs> what's uh, what's coming up in the future? Um, a lot of stuff. I don't know. I, 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 I'm honestly just kind of in the moment right now. I don't, sure. I don't have, I have a lot of stuff in the air. Mm -hmm. And then, um, 
some stuff that's coming out. Um, I usually don't talk about it till it's out. I sure. guess I don't know. Don't jinx I just, it. Yeah. just because yeah, what if they good. hire somebody else and then mm-hmm. this is forever? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The more mixes, the more. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I want to keep doing this. I, I, it's been good and it's been fun, and uh, mm-hmm. I got a daughter, and I'm trying to be absolutely provide. And do you work out of the house? I do. Yeah. How's that work? It's hard. I bet. It's, it's just it's it's good, but it's uh, I need to be way, way more uh, conscious of how I use my time Mm -hmm. every minute is way more valuable now Mm -hmm. so there's not Mm -hmm. a lot of hanging right 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 right. so um well listen i you're you've earned every bit of it yeah for um, for sure your work is you know your work is so significant in a obvious but yet subtle way like there's a thing about your you you have an identity, but it's kind of like it's because you don't have an identity. Like the records grow on the artist's behalf because of the way you touch them oh, in you. some ways. And I, I think that's clearly evident on the Billy stuff. Mm-hmm. And when I now have looked at the records that you've done, you go, oh, there's that kind of magic. And I'm not sure what it is yet. Could be mm-hmm. the way you treat vocals. Could be the way you're just instinctive. Um but mm-hmm. it sure is refreshing and good because it's kind of old school and new school. Mm-hmm. You know, like you have respect for the past and you bring that forward. That's, that's and, a real good point. And, and you're also unafraid. That That's the cool part. You're like, oh, if I want the harmonies and the background vocals up, you know, to your point, you'll you'll push them up. There's no rules. So we, we celebrate that on the show, man. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. For oh, sure. Awesome. For sure. Absolutely pleasure. Cool. Dave, take us home. Will do. Will do. Uh, a couple of things came up during the show that impressed me. One is that a girl with talent can put that talent on SoundCloud and go straight to the top. It still can happen, and uh, that's impressive. And then sitting straight across from me is, is something very similar. Uh, just hard work and being at the right place and just and just doing it. it can, you can still move to the top really quick in this profession if, if you have something that people like and you're a person they like. So it can be done, guys. And, and it, um, you just have to have the right song and you got to have the right personality and the right skill set for the right moment. So think about that because I think there's a lot of opportunity out there that we miss sometimes by trying to overthink things. See you next week.